All right, so let me just give you a lowdown on how this module is gonna go down. I'm gonna be using my tablet and keyboard and I'm gonna try to do it this way. Just know that a quick disclaimer, it's gonna take longer and it's gonna take a bit more trial and error to get there because the way color grading works is that you wanna do multiple things at once to really get a feel for it and go places. So if I'm just moving one wheel and then I'm moving another one and see if it's working or not, you can just imagine that it's gonna take a little bit of time to get to where I wanna be, but that's okay. At least you guys will be with me during this journey. So we're gonna do it that way. And as always, I'm gonna be doing things many different ways to encompass everything that I use on daily basis when it comes to grading my images. And that's gonna give you a broader perspective of all the tools and how to use them and when to use them and stuff like that. All that good stuff, no fluff and Anything that I'm gonna be using whenever, there's gonna be a reason behind it and I'm gonna commentate on that like I usually do. The point of this video is creating a lookbook. Let's just say you're working with somebody who's kinda of green, a new creative director who just doesn't really know much about color grading but just is the kind of dude who tells you make it pop, that sort of thing. So to help those kind of clients, I'm gonna show you to create a generic lookbook. And what a generic lookbook consists of is four kinds of basic looks. So we're gonna create a warm look, we're gonna create a high contrast look, we're gonna create a low contrast look, and we're gonna create a cold look. Now the warm look is gonna be obviously a little bit of a grade. A cold is a little bit of grade. And then for high and low con, I'm gonna turn off my warm and cold nodes and have like a sort of, uh, think of it as like rec seven or nine, but sort of pushed and then not so pushed and with low contrast, got it? So let's try to do that here and uh, see what happens. So here's our scopes and I'm just looking at this image and I already see that it's a little bit heavier on the blue, but that's because of the time of day, but that's okay. So let's balance it out first of all. So one thing that I wanna show you if you are dealing with this, if you wanna balance it out, is this thing right here, which is your printer lights. And uh, I'm gonna show you here how it works instead of using the keyboard shortcut. So I can totally see my blue is really, really exaggerated compared to everything else. So I'm gonna grab my blue and bring it down and look what happens. And then once I do that, now I can go, you know what, now I wanna bring my green down because the green is kinda of pushed too. and I'm gonna par park it somewhere around here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna pull my red up because it's just a bit too, okay, so this is already looking good. So that would be the first step that we just did. I mean, look at down here to where we are. We're looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go back to my primaries wheels and I'm just gonna, because I noticed like a little um, red that's somewhat lifted here in my mids, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And just, I'm gonna do before and after so you can see that. So turn it off and on, off and on. It does a really nice effect. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take my gain and just push it a little bit up to the red warmth. And now it's looking real nice, okay? So just simple couple of things to get it in the ballpark and you can see it here how much we've done. So we used our printer lights, we've used our primary wheels and we um, got to a pretty good base start. So now I got that, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna park it here and maybe think of like the contrast a little bit. So in, in a case like this, in a shot like that, I'm gonna start with my contrast a little bit and then I'm gonna lift my gamma up to give her a little bit more juice in her face and then I'm gonna like keep doing my contrast to create that cool little film look and that happens right here. You already see the gentle contrast that's happening as giving it a really nice film look and that's happening because of the technique that I'm using right here. So just an FYI. And now what I wanna do is give it a little bit more saturation. So I'm gonna go to 65-ish. Usually that's my good spot where everything starts to separate. So you got your greens, your blues, your 
reds or pinks coming through her skin is coming through mind you at this point this is a generic lookbook so we're not gonna go crazy and have 20 nodes i want to do like the fastest quickest thing to get there to just kind of give them some sense of uh, which direction we can go in or should go in so i'm gonna create a new node so this is my base i create a new node and now this one we're gonna make it warm like we talked about so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna take my gain and i'm gonna move it towards yellow and then I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna move it towards yellow and I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. So something like that. And what I wanna do is I wanna grab my gamma and do a similar thing, but not as much. And now I'm gonna counterbalance that with my lift. So I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And I'm gonna pull my gamma back just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my gain and just push it even more. R really like, we wanna kinda exaggerate it. And just read the scopes, okay? Don't keep your eyes away from this because just see what's happening. You wanna add warmth, subtract blue. You add warmth. If you don't like it, you know, it's a bit more green than red, then you just take that and you push it up and look what happens. Okay, so it's just simple. That once you understand these things, you know what to do. The reason why I'm using this to create the warm look is because I don't want too much messing around happening in my lower mids or where her skin is. It's lit under natural lighting conditions, so I know that because I worked with footage like that in the past, so I know how to attack it in a proper way. Now I can go here and work on the contrast a little bit more so I can take my lift and just pull it a little bit more just to kind of exaggerate it a bit more, lift my gamma and do a bit more contrast. Maybe go back on, I can go, you know what, let's go in hue versus saturation and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pull my reds just a little bit because that's where her skin sits right so i'm just gonna go in just something like that not too much something like that that is so we started here let's do a playback and we're right here it's looking really good see how easy it is guys color grading is not rocket science Get that out of your head. Anyone who tells you that if you're seeing a movie or something on Vimeo and it has a lot of views and it's really cool, and if you tell them that you're gonna try to create that look and they tell you, yeah, you wish, tell them to shut the F up because there's way too many people out there that will say things like, oh, if this was done in Hollywood, then uh, I don't even know. Don't even try it because you can never do it. They're using the same software that we're learning this on. It's exactly the same tools. A lot of the times you'll be blown away how little effort they put in to create what they create because they're tastemakers. They're not technical nerds, okay? That's the difference. There's people out there that are overcomplicating this whole industry and what color grading is about. And I'm here to tell you that just look at this. Tell me this is not gorgeous, okay? This is not from a movie. I did this in two nodes. Now if I drop my sauce and take out the noise and then I add some grain, and create a vignette, I don't even need a vignette, but like, look at this, tell me that you haven't seen this in a movie. We haven't done anything, we haven't even picked her skin, we haven't even qualified the grass, we haven't even qualified the highlights, we haven't done anything, and look at the image we got from where it started, you know? So this is what I'm talking about, color grading, you have to look at it, take that intimidation factor out. If you have practiced everything up until this module, you're ready, you're genuinely ready. The stuff that you've learned does not exist anywhere. This is not the kind of stuff people put out, okay? They put out to show you, hey, this is saturation, crank it at 100%, and then they end the sentence by saying something like, well, I'm just trying to give you an example of what it does, blah, 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 we're gonna move on to the next thing. I'm not doing that. Since day one with my masterclass, I've been trying to turn you into a tastemaker, 
into a profitable freaking machine as a colorist and just in general as a freelancer. And you can take these skills and apply it if you are even a filmmaker. If you're a filmmaker, more power to you. All this applies, okay? Because even throughout my entire course, I've been talking about my experience as a cinematographer, my experience as an editor, my experience as an entrepreneur, and I'm bringing all these elements in because in 2019, that's what's hot. You gotta do multiple things. If you're just a specialist at one thing, it's cool, but it can be better. I am good as a colorist because so much of my knowledge comes from being a cinematographer. I understand how color science works. I understand if it was shot like this, what I can do in post and then vice versa. And then color grading helps me become a better shooter. So, you know, I had to go on a tangent to kind of give you a perspective. All right, enough rambling. Let's get back to grading. So this, we will call it our warm version and I'm gonna go ahead and create it. So that is our warm version, okay? Now, if I turn this off and create a new node, now let's create a punchy version. So I'm gonna just crank the contrast and I'm gonna bring the highlights down. I still want it to be done tastefully. I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna crank it. I'm gonna bring this up. That's the dance that you gotta do. I'm gonna bring this down because just remember, when it comes to color grading, all the juice is right here. Anything from 768 down to 384, that's where the most saturation and just Roger Deakins dances in that area. This is where everything happens. So if you just know this and remember this, you got it, you got it, you're there. Now, I wanna give it a little bit more pop, so I'm gonna give it a bit more saturation. And then I'm just gonna balance it out because I just feel like it is a little bit leaning toward blue. So this time I'm gonna show you another technique. I'm gonna go under the second tab right here and then I'm just gonna crank the temperature and make it warm, just a little bit. And then what I wanna do is I wanna go here and grab my reds in my hue versus sat and I wanna pull it down a little bit. Because again, all about taste making guys, I'm not gonna just show you like these make crappy versions and just show you that, oh yeah, just do that and that's it. So we're gonna make the best we can with each look and then present those four looks and then let them decide, okay? We gotta be honest. You gotta be honest with your client. You gotta be honest, most importantly, to yourself. So this was before the poppy look or the punchy look. This is with the punchy look and it still has a really nice filmic thing going on. If I turn the whole thing off and play it through and then I turn it on like you see it, I mean, it's still really, really cool. Um, so I'm gonna save that version as my high con version. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reset it. And in this one, we're gonna do a low con. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my highlights, bring them up, that's okay. I'm gonna, actually, gonna, I'm just gonna turn this on for a second. Oh, it's even. So let's see, the thing is that this image is baked in with the letterbox and that's gonna be distracting, but don't focus on that um, because you will never be working with footage like that. And if you are, then you will just create a crop in here. You can crop your image to that point but I'm gonna keep the focus on color grading, so just bear with me. So I'm gonna raise my lifts, I'm gonna bring my gain down, and then I'm gonna add some contrast. So we're gonna go to the first tab again, and and then you know what, let's bring this down a little bit. And then let's lift our gamma up, bring our gain down, and now what I wanna do is, so this is important. So I like where she is sitting and like my lower mids are good, but then I wanna pull my blackest black and pull them down. So if I do it with lift, it's gonna pull her down, lower mids and everything else. And that's not what I want. So in a case like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here to my log wheels and I'm gonna go to my shadows and that's much more targeted. And now when I pull this down, look what's happening. And this is why I'm gonna do before and after, so just look. So this is why it was very important to show you all these different techniques in the prior modules. I wanted to take you through all of this because everything has its own place. And if you remember the proper exposure lesson in color correction, 
I spent about 17 minutes just taking you through on a grayscale image showing you how each of these tools work and now that is coming in handy because I knew that log wheels are very targeted I use that to just give me what I needed and not have to create 16 different nodes to get there because not to mention you're going to be deteriorating your image the more you mess with it so this is going to be our low con look we're just going to go ahead and save it and now we're going to create our cold look so I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to create a prior node, a node here, and then let's cool it off. And the way I want to cool it off is very realistically. So I'm going to go under my primaries wheels and I'm just going to take this and pull it down and then start taking it towards. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And then what I want to do with my gamma is um, keep it on the cool side and then I want to take my lift and counter that to give it some life in the skin and then I want to take my gamma and see give it a little bit more magenta and then I want to go to my lift and again counter that Okay, let's play it through. This is what we had and this is where we are. So one thing that I would recommend you do, so like see how the it's showing that the blue is kind of off the charts, which obviously it's not, it's totally fine, but it's showing that it's just kind of going crazy. So if you are scared of that, what you need to do is go under color management, scroll down and you're gonna see broadcast safe. So negative 20 by negative 120 is the default and that is perfect. So just click on that and it's not really going to change anything here, but what's happening is that now you're protected. So if you were to send that to broadcast, you're not going to get any bounce back because it's clipping that invisible top um, that we don't even see here and you're protected. But if you just are freaking out and you're like, okay, I don't like what's happening. Um, we can pull our blues down just a little bit if I take that and just move it over see what's happening So it's like I brought that blue in and now we're actually protected so we can leave it there, too And this would be our cold version now Let me just open this up and look at our four versions and how different they are so I'm going to move that out of the way and Now let's just play it through and study it so just look at how many cool versions we were able to create, how quickly. And this is our warm version. This is our high contrast. This is our low contrast. And then this is our cold version. And obviously for the look and the grade, the warm is pretty nice. But I think when it comes to all the detail being preserved and everything, I'm really liking the low contrast and her skin and everything. Like it's really keeping us in the ballpark and then going from there would be very easy. And now if I just go to like original with these versions, you can see the original and then all the other versions we created, they're very different. So this is the demonstration when your client just tells you make it pop and don't really have a direction, you're gonna create a generic lookbook and it's gonna be consist of these four guys, warm look, high contrast, Rec. 709, low contrast, Rec. 709, cold look, and then let them decide. They can all of this tell you, hey, can you split the difference between these two? Can you split the difference between these two? And you know, it's gonna start a dialogue. That's what color grading is all about. It's all about storytelling. We're done with technical mumbo jumbo. Now let's just have fun.